In 2018, the Happiness Alliance hosted a panel at the 6th OECD World Forum, Statistics, Knowledge and Policy, the Future of Well-Being. Stefana Bartoli, author of the Manifesto for Happiness and professor at Siena University, spoke about four key policies that would change our lives and our systems for happiness, sustainability, and well-being. I'm uh, Stefano Bartolini, an economist from the University of Siena. Um, so, what do we know from the happiness science uh, about what makes people happy? Money matters, uh, less than previously thought, uh, and uh, mostly at low income level, but it has some importance. Uh, but there's a dominant factor on happiness, affecting happiness, which is the quality of relationships that people have with other people, which is called social capital or social sciences. However, although money does not matter that much, and uh, social capital matters a lot, policies are focused on economic growth and not on uh, human relationships. The long-term trend to the decline of social capital exhibited by several uh, developed and developing countries is likely, is likely to be a consequence of the little attention paid by policies to uh, social capital. Happiness studies thus suggest that policies should be rebalanced in favor of social capital. What policies are possible? This is the topic of my third talk. This is the policies I listed in, uh, in the forthcoming book. Let's begin with uh, cities. For uh, 5,000 uh, years, um, cities have been, um, had the function to create a social fabric which was created in common spaces, squares and streets, where citizens meet and know each other. This is the way cities uh, have always accomplished to their task to aggregate people since they first existed. Because cities have always had that, that function. Then cars invaded the common space and the relational function of the common space collapsed. A famous urbanist says that it is impossible uh, to put at easy both cars and people in a city at the same time. We, we have to make a choice. And uh, we have chosen to put at easy cars. The consequence has been the deterioration of relationships. Um, all this can be changed. And many northern European cities um, did it. These cities show how a city for relationships can be organized. The pedestrian areas, parks, sports centers, uh, walkable neighborhoods, uh, car restrictions, public transports, cycling. Uh, the um, transportation must be reorganized and uh, um, private traffic private traffic must be strongly limited so to uh, give back the common space to persons, to the people. Um, and then, uh, schooling. Uh, what do we learn in school? We go to school when we're six, and we have to, we have to sit for five hours uh, per, per day, at least, which is uh, inco incompatible with uh, uh, child well-being. So, the first message that the children get from school is you're not here to have a good time. Uh, you're here to perform. To perform is something, to have a good time is something different. And then, children are told to competition with their peers and to focus on cognitive, cognitive intelligence, which is the only important uh, form of intelligence. As positive feelings are mostly excluded from the schooling experience, schools' organization is based on incentives, sticks and carrots. Predictably, this kind of schooling produces distress, frustration, tensions, and sometimes despair. Is this a price to be paid for high academic standards? No. Evidence shows that participatory teaching practices that are widespread in, main, in, uh, in mainstream teaching in Northern European countries generate students with better and more cooperative relationships. Participatory practices also force their academic achievements due to the association between positive emotions and learning. 
Northern European countries are integrating in mainstream schooling the principles for Montessori schooling, an extreme form of participatory teaching based on students' cooperation in group work and absence of tests and scores. Studies show that Montessori schooling promotes emotional as well as cognitive skills. Work and then we should change the work experience. Work organization within companies is often based on similar principles to schooling, incentives, competition, hierarchy. Similarly to schooling, working experience produces distress, frustration, tensions, and sometimes even despair. Is this the price to be paid for the for high productivity of the workforce? No. Studies show that workers uh, experiencing greater well-being on their job are more and not less productive. Mm -hmm. An increasing number of companies have understood this and organized work, relaxing hierarchies, and paying greater attention to workers' well-being well -being and their intrinsic motivations. And then, let me say something on healthcare. Healthcare spending is running out of control. For instance, in the US, almost two dollars out of 10 are spent uh, in uh, healthcare now, an, number, an enormous amount of money. Uh, a cause for this is increasing morbidity. Uh, in many countries, there's evidence that health is worsening. Uh, why? Epidemiologists give us an answer. Uh, evidence from epidemiologists shows that stress and ill-being are major risk factors for health. Even more than smoking or uh, not doing exercise, uh, uh, classical risk factors. But unhappiness is even more dangerous. In practice, more unhappiness uh, means more sickness. There's clear evidence, especially from the US, that the decline in happiness boosted morbidity, morbidity and mortality, and then healthcare spending. The healthcare system is the end station of distress. Ill-being tends to translate into health troubles. The policies for happiness, uh, the, the ones I listed, thus would uh, uh, decrease healthcare spending. All the policies I've listed uh, are low cost. And they may even be beneficial for public budgets because they would decrease uh, healthcare spending. Many thanks for your attention. Join the happiness revolution. Discover tools and resources for your happiness and the happiness and well-being of your community at happycounts.org.